joining. There are so many people here. I, I didn't expect so many people to be here today. Uh, I'm very happy that all of you can uh, spend some time with me uh, to listen to me talk about uh, potential opportunities to study abroad in Japan. So before I start, just to give you a quick uh, self-introduction, my name is Shelton Su, as you can see on my uh, Zoom, uh, Zoom profile name. Uh, I'm a Chinese American, I'm from the US, uh, but I'm based in Japan. I'm a student at the, the University of Tokyo in Japan, uh, studying for my PhD. So while I'm a student, I'm also doing a little bit of work on the side uh, to promote Japanese universities to different foreign students. Okay? Uh, so I, I go around to different countries, talk to different universities and their students about what's the benefit of studying in Japan. So today I want to give a brief, maybe 30 minute presentation on what are the benefits of uh, studying in Japan. Okay? Uh, I think many of you have probably never considered Japan to be an option for studying uh, after you graduate from the university. But today I'm going to tell you a little bit about potential opportunities. Okay? I'm not going to talk about specific universities yet, uh, but I will just talk about the general benefits for you to consider uh, when, you are, when you're thinking about studying abroad and why you should choose Japan as a potential destination. So I have a quick a, uh, PowerPoint presentation that I'm going to share with you uh, on the screen right now. So just a second while I pull up the PowerPoint. Okay, uh, I hope uh, all of you can see the PowerPoint. It's shared on the screen now, it's bigger. Okay, so want to get started today. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, why, you, why you should consider studying abroad in Japan. Some of the biggest benefits of studying abroad in Japan and how our organization, the Study Abroad Research Institute, can help you achieve that dream of studying abroad in Japan. Okay. So today we're going to talk about, uh, so first I want to give you a brief overview of what our organization does. Then we're gonna go a little bit into the benefits of studying in Japan, uh, which are mainly two points. One is about earning a good living after you graduate. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the kind of jobs available and the kind of salaries that you can get as a university graduate in Japan. And uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the costs of getting an education here in Japan. Okay, I'm going to tell you uh, some of the prices for getting a university degree as well as what kind of options you have to fund your studies. Okay, many of you are probably concerned about the costs of doing a, having an education here. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how you can earn money to help pay for it. And at the end, I'm going to talk about how our organization can help you uh, to get into a university. Okay. Uh, at the very end, uh, we can have a question, question and answer session uh, where I'm happy to answer any questions you have uh, about study abroad in Japan or anything else um, that you may be interested in. Okay. So Sorry, did somebody say something? Oh, okay, great. All right. Um, okay, then uh, I'll get started. First, I'm just going to talk about the organization a little bit. So what is our organization? So uh, we're a nonprofit organization. Okay, we're not here to take any of your money. We're not a business. Uh, we, don't, we don't earn money from this. Uh, we're just a nonprofit organization uh, that was set up by students like me who are studying in Japan uh, to tell okay. other students about the benefits of studying abroad, uh, especially in Japan, okay? And how study abroad can help people uh, start an international career. So like I said, uh, we're based in Japan, in Tokyo. And uh, right now, our work is primarily reaching out to African students like yourself uh, to introduce them to universities in Japan. Okay? Like I said, we don't charge any money for this. We're just a nonprofit organization. We're not a business. Okay. Uh, so our, so what we do is we bring together universities in Japan and, and, uh, and students in Africa 
and encourage yeah. more and encourage schools and governments in Japan to accept more foreign students. So that's a basic idea of what we do. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, so you can see we talk to students, we talk to universities, and we talk to the government so that they can all support our work to achieve a goal of bringing more foreign students to Japanese universities. Uh, do you see us? You know that my name has gone as Elizabeth. I think, okay, perfect. All right, uh, let's, let's continue. Uh, all right, so we can help you uh, with this uh, study abroad because we have our own experience doing study abroad ourselves. So this is mostly an introduction about me, uh, but uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about my own study abroad experience and how that can help you uh, when you're thinking about studying abroad, okay? So this is me. So I was born in China. I moved to Japan when I was five years old. Okay? Then I moved to the US when I was 12. And I study abroad in many universities in the US, Australia, UK, and now in Japan. Okay. Um, I also worked for two years in Tanzania, uh, right before I came back to Japan as a student. So uh, I am currently a student in Japan, but I apply to my place in the university from Tanzania. So I can give you uh, some advice as to how you can apply for a Japanese university from abroad. Um, it, the process is a little bit different from if you're applying uh, from within Japan. Uh, but because I did it myself, I can tell you a little bit about how that can be done. So uh, the main part of today's presentation is about the benefits of studying Japan. Okay, the first, let me talk about uh, after you graduate, uh, what sort of uh, benefits you can get for earning a good living. So salaries are quite high in Japan for university graduates. I give you some numbers. Okay? In 2019, the average annual salary in Japan was about 40,000 US dollars. Okay? Uh, for people living in Tokyo, where I live, this is the capital city, the average salary was even higher. It's more than $50,000 a year. And for some jobs, if you study IT and become an IT consultant, uh, you can earn even higher salary, uh, about $58,000 on average. And if you get a master's or PhD degree, then based on the numbers I just gave you, you have even higher pay. Master students get 23% more in salary on uh, average, and PhDs get 42% more. So the more education you get, the higher the salaries that you can get while you live in Japan. Okay. Uh, at the same time, getting a job in Japan is quite easy right now. The reason is that Japan is running out of workers. So this is an interesting graph. It shows you the number of jobs that are available for each person in Japan that's applying for a job. So in 2019, there were about two and a half jobs available for each person who's looking for a job. So you can see that in Japan, there is a very strong shortage of workers. Okay? Uh, for every person who's looking for a job, not only is there a job available, but there is more than twice as many jobs available, okay? So there is a very strong shortage of workers. So there is, for many foreign workers who are interested in studying in Japan, now is a good time to consider. And this uh, situation, a shortage of workers in Japan will only get worse in the future because the population of Japan is actually declining quite fast. Here's a graph, okay? So in, uh, right now, well, Japan has a population of about 130 million people. In 2100, uh, in about 80 years time, uh, it'll be about 85 million people. So it will be shrinking by more than a third in 80 years. So Japan's population is not growing, it's becoming less and less, okay? So that means there's going to be more shortage of workers in the future. Uh, and if there are fewer workers in the future, that means the salary will only increase. Uh, somebody's not on mute. If possible, everybody can go on mute. That'd be great. Okay, great. All right. So yeah, like I said, 
uh, in the future, uh, the salary will only increase because there are fewer and fewer workers. Now, that's after you graduate from study in Japan. So first, how do you pay for studying in a university in Japan? Is it expensive? Okay, uh, actually, I can tell you that getting a degree in Japan is much cheaper than in some of the Western countries. Uh, I give you my personal example. Okay, I study at a university called Yale in the, uni uh, in the US, uh, where school was about $44,000 a year. Okay, this is a lot of money, it's a lot of money. Okay, uh, in London, uh, where I study my master's, uh, the tuition is about somewhere between $38,000 to $51,000. So also very expensive. In Australia, where I also studied, uh, it's about somewhere between $26,000 to $41,000 a year. So also very expensive. So I'm, I'm just telling you, in the US, in the UK, in Australia, they're all very expensive okay, for getting an education. In Japan, so where I study right now is the University of Tokyo. Uh, the tuition is much cheaper. It's only about $5,000 a year. So in the US, it's $44,000. In Japan, it's $5,000. So uh, it's one eighth the price of the US. So Japan is much cheaper okay, for getting an education. But maybe some of you think, okay, $5,000 a year is still a lot of money. Uh, I, I totally understand that $5,000 is a lot of money. Um, but Japan has a lot more scholarships for foreign students than some of the Western countries I mentioned. Okay? I give you an example. Okay? So every year, uh, Japan's um, ja Japan uh, Student Services Organization. So this is the government organization that provides uh, information to foreign students about study abroad in Japan. Every year they publish a pamphlet that contains all the scholarship information uh, that foreign students can get, okay? So I give you some of the information from the 2019 and 2020 pamphlet. I summarized it for you. So first of all, I, there are many different types of scholarships that are available for foreign students in Japan. And some of these types of scholarships are not available in other countries. So some of the major types of scholarships that are available, one is national government scholarship. So this is given by the Japanese government directly to foreign students. Uh, these scholarships uh, give you free tuition, so you don't have to pay for school. It also gives the student round-trip airplane ticket from their home country for free. Uh, and after they come to Japan, they get about $1,400 a month in cash so that they can help pay for their living expenses while in Japan. Okay? So that you can use the cash to pay for food, uh, pay for housing, uh, pay for other things that you need while you're living and studying in Japan. Okay, so that's national government scholarship. But there is also many regional government scholarships. So the government, the governments of different provinces and different cities in Japan, they also give scholarships that are besides the national government scholarship. So this pamphlet that I mentioned lists more than 30 of them uh, that are separate, okay? So these regional government scholarships also give free tuition, so you don't have to pay for school. And they also give you about $900 a month in cash that you can, you can spend on living expenses while you're in Japan. And besides these, there are also many private foundation scholarships. So these are NGOs, charities, and private companies that offer scholarships to students. So these are mostly in cash. Uh, on average, uh, a student's expected to receive about $1,900 a month in cash that they can use to pay for living expenses or tuition. Okay. So, and th this pamphlet lists more than 90 of them. Okay. And of course, this pamphlet is not everything. Okay. These, the, the, this pamphlet is just information that are available to the Japan Student Services Organization. Outside of these more than 120 scholarships I talked about, there are also other ones that are not listed in the pamphlet. Uh, once you apply to the school and get accepted into a program in a Japanese university, 
The university's admission office and student office will all often have a lot more information about different scholarships that you can apply and the school can help you along. So that's outside of these scholarships that I just talked about. So there are many different ways to find scholarships to pay for your study. But besides getting scholarships, students can also earn money while they are studying in Japan at the same time. So they can get scholarships, study, but they can also work in part-time jobs at the same time, okay? So Japanese student visa allows a student to work part-time for up to 28 hours a week. You don't have to apply for a separate visa to work. Uh, the student visa, uh, once you get accepted into university, will give you 28 hours a week to work uh, for money, okay? And these are some of the typical jobs that foreign students can get. So one is teaching English. Okay, uh, this pays about $39 per hour, okay? Uh, some people work in stores like uh, supermarkets or in restaurants, uh, in which case they'll get paid about $14 per hour. Okay. And other people, they choose to work in construction sites or factories or warehouses in which they get paid about $28 an hour. So you can do the math yourself, but if you work for 28 hours a week at this, these wages, per, uh, per hour wages, uh, you can calculate that um, you can get, uh, you know, more than $1,000 a month, right? Uh, in additional uh, money that you can spend on your living expenses. So that's extra money that you can get by working part-time outside of school. And uh, yeah, uh, that, that was uh, some of the ways that you can finance your education while in Japan. So now I want to summarize by talk a little bit about how our organization can help you get into a university in Japan. So we're, we're here, we're not part of a university, we're an independent NGO. So we work with some of the universities, but we provide some of these following services, okay? Uh, one is learning a language. Okay, so uh, while some Japanese universities have English language courses, uh, many more have Japanese language courses, okay? So if you learn the Japanese language, you'll find yourself with many more options available to you uh, in the university. And after you graduate, you will have many more opportunities to become employed because many Japanese companies prefer people who are capable of speaking the Japanese language and can work in the language. Um, yeah, so uh, learning the language is definitely helpful uh, if you want to uh, come to Japan to study and to work after you graduate. So there are many online classes to learn Japanese. Uh, many of them don't cost any money. There are many independent uh, materials that you can find online to help. So we can show you some of these information if you are interested. We have many partner universities who told us about their programs. And uh, we have a list of different programs that are available that you can look through. So we can help you, we can help point out, you know, what are these programs and what programs are suitable for you. And uh, in these, um, information provided by our partner universities. Uh, there is also information on how to apply. Okay. Um, uh, often uh, schools have very unique ways that they want to apply, uh, they want students to apply, and each school is quite different. So we'll help provide information on how to apply, uh, first for the school, and then after you accept it, how to apply for scholarships. And lastly, we can provide some information on life in Japan. What is it like living here? Okay, as a student, uh, as a person who work, uh, what is it like uh, to be a student, a foreigner uh, in Japan? Uh, because I'm foreign and I live in Japan, uh, I can personally provide you some information on that. Now, like I mentioned earlier, we have some partnerships with Japanese universities. And uh, we contact their admissions officers directly. So that means we can get many information about their programs 
and about how to apply that it's very difficult to find on your own. Okay, there are a lot of information that is not easy, it's not so easy to find, and uh, we can help find that. So based on those extra information that we can find, uh, we can give you extra tips and uh, advice to help you get into the university of your dreams and uh, apply to different programs in Japan much easier. Okay. So yeah, we have our website as well as Facebook, LinkedIn, and YouTube, uh, where we regularly post information about new uh, developments among Japanese universities and new programs that are accepting foreign students. So uh, yeah, we encourage you to look into these. And uh, at the end uh, of our uh, presentation today, I will also uh, share this link, uh, these links again uh, with Giselle uh, by email so she can share with all of you. Um, yeah, for, so that you can uh, look into them uh, for the future. Okay, great. Uh, that's it for my presentation. Um, okay, so uh, I see there are many people here and uh, I want to open up to any questions that you may have about anything uh, that I talked about today or I haven't talked about today. So yeah, if you have any questions, please go ahead. Uh, I think I see a hand up from uh, Benedict. Uh, maybe you can uh, yeah, ask a question. Um, yes, please go ahead. Good. Okay, it's it's some morning here, so I'll say good morning. Good morning. Yeah, so as you rightly said, I'm Benedict, and I wanted to find out, um, do the universities in Japan themselves offer housing? Like, are there, are there housing available, or you need to search for the housing yourself? Because you mentioned the... Uh, um, the cost of housing sort of like it's different from the cost of uh, living on yeah yeah and being the being there yeah yeah okay so uh, all universities have dormitories okay uh, so dormitories tend to be uh, pretty cheap uh, in my experience they're about um, one hundred fifty dollars a month maybe one hundred to one hundred fifty dollars a month okay uh, in terms of rent. Um, and uh, in many cases, uh, for foreign students, the universities might give a discount for dormitories. And sometimes there are even free uh, dormitories that you can stay in. Okay, so that is uh, one option uh, for students. Uh, in some cases, uh, many students, uh, they might not want to stay in dormitory. Uh, maybe they want to live outside the campus uh, with their friends uh, in a shared uh, sort of apartment arrangement. Uh, in that case, uh, the school can certainly help uh, find uh, cheap housing uh, for you as well. So the students, so the student office tend to have uh, a lot of information about uh, which accommodations are suitable for students uh, in terms of um, you know being close to school, uh, having a quiet neighborhood, uh, not so expensive. So yeah. Uh, student office can usually help arrange a lot of that. Yeah. But uh, yeah, the dormitories tend to be the cheapest option unless you're willing to share an apartment with many people. Um, in that case, you know, it'd be a little bit, a little bit more crowded um, that you have to maybe share rooms with other people. In that case, it might become cheaper, but you know, you know, it, 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 it wouldn't it, it wouldn't be as nice in terms of uh, the living arrangement so yeah and th i think it would be helpful if you could explain how the dormitory setup would uh, looks like because um how i understand a dormitory and ghana would yeah. definitely be different from how a dormitory would look like in japan yeah, yeah. so uh, there are many different kinds of dormitory depending on the price um the most usual accommodation is basically one studio apartment so it's uh, one room with one bed so single occupancy there's one person in one room uh the room tends to be pretty small it's just one small bedroom and then the uh, kitchen bathroom 
Koele, all of that will be shared uh, within one floor. And each floor tend to have, say, for example, 10 to 15 people, and you'll be sharing maybe two toilets and three shower stalls, something of that sort, right? Uh, so that's a basic arrangement. Uh, sometimes there are arrangements where there are multiple people living in one room. So you have slightly bigger bedrooms, uh, but, but you'll be sharing with another person. Uh, uh, or um, yeah, or maybe two people, right? So you, um, so you have uh, multiple person living in the same room. Uh, but usually, uh, based on, on my personal experience and my knowledge, uh, in Japan, there are no dormitory rooms where you have to share, share one room with more than four people, okay? Uh, so four is generally the maximum occupancy in a single room. Um, yeah, the most common arrangement, like I said, is single occupancy, one person, one room. Uh, but but uh, there, are, there are cases where there are more than one person in one room, but four is usually the max. Uh, generally for dormitories, uh, kitchens, living room, bathroom, toilets are all shared uh, across different rooms and different people. So that's like the general arrangement. I don't know if that answers your question. <laughs> Yeah, it does. Thank you very okay. much. No problem. Okay. Uh, any other questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Yes, please. Um, so how is the tolerance level like in Japan towards foreigners? Uh, so in Japan right now, there are, so as I mentioned earlier, Japan has about 130 million people, right? Uh, and right now, Japan has about 2.5 million foreigners living here. Uh, many of them are students. Uh, there are one, about a million of them are foreign students. Uh, the rest, 1.5 million, are working in Japan in full-time jobs. Okay? Uh, among these about 1 million students, uh, most of the students are Asians. So from neighboring countries of Japan, for example, Korea, China, Taiwan, Singapore, etc. So... Uh, but there are very few Africans, uh, at least African students at the moment. Uh, based on official data, uh, African students, every year about 8,000 African students show up, okay, 8,000. So, so, that, so that's 8,000 students within 1 million. <laughs> so it's not a very big number, okay. So uh, many Japanese people, they do not have a first-hand experience interacting with uh, foreigners and even less have experience interacting with Africans, okay? Uh, people just don't know, right? They, they have no experience. So to, to answer your question about their level of tolerance, it's very hard to say because uh, people have very little experience uh, with handling foreigners. Uh, mostly they approach foreigners with curiosity, okay? They want to learn about your culture, learn about the country you're from, learn about, you know, your language, uh, etc. okay? So they have a sense of curiosity. So yeah, uh, because uh, most people don't have experience with foreigners, there is uh, very, uh, I would say very little in terms of racism, right? Because people just don't know anything about foreigners, so it's it's hard for them to become racist. Yeah, uh, so I think that's something that you don't have to worry as much uh, in Japan. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you. No problem. Okay. Uh, I see two more hands. Uh, let's go to Louisa. 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 Yes. Please good I hear some echo. I like to ask. I checked yeah. about the study abroad something, and the universities and the courses I saw, I didn't mm -hmm. see any one relating to like engineering and computer yeah. students. So I wanted to know, is it that it wasn't added or it's part or it's not part of the scholarship at all? Mm -hmm. So right now, as you know, the COVID epidemic is happening. So many Japanese universities have postponed programs uh, for foreign students, right? So there are engineering programs, for example, but right now they're just not accepting foreign students because of COVID, yeah? Uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm expecting that soon uh, these uh, programs are going to be available. 
And of course, I will let all of you know uh, through, the, through our Facebook and through our website when these programs become available. But um, if you don't see the programs right now there, that means uh, the, university are, the universities are currently not ready to accept foreign students at the moment because of COVID related restrictions. Okay. Uh, yeah, in general, because, um, because of COVID, a lot of things are changing at the moment. So it's, it's very hard to say what will, what will um, the programs look like in the next few months. Maybe everything will become okay and there will be more programs available. Or maybe, you know, uh, Japan will take a little bit of a long time to recover uh, from COVID, in which case there will be fewer programs available. So, uh, yeah, I, I, can't, I can't tell you exactly what will be available in the next few months because a lot of things are changing at the moment. Okay, thank yeah. you. No problem. Okay, uh, next one, I see uh, Yasmin uh, has her hand up. Yeah, hello. Um, so as sort of a follow-up question to hers, yep. uh, since it's COVID, isn't there like an online option where you can study with all like the options that you gave us, such as like tuition for Japanese and... Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The scholarships. Yeah. So yes, uh, you're absolutely correct. There are online online courses that are available for um, foreign students. Um, but but here here's um there's something that I want to tell you is that even if the courses are online, it doesn't get any cheaper. Okay, it's still the same price, and uh, the quality of online education is not that great. Uh, I have some first uh, first hand experience with attending classes uh, in uh, Japanese online courses in Japanese online universities. Um, and uh, frankly, the courses are not that great. <laughs> uh, many uh, Japanese professors, uh, they're not very experienced uh, with online courses. So they, they're trying to figure out how to teach courses online properly. Uh, so many of them are not doing so well at the moment. <laughs> I think uh, soon maybe they will ex improve, uh, but right now it's still a very much a work in progress. So that's one thing. And the other thing is that, um, like I mentioned um, uh, earlier, one of the biggest benefits for you to study in Japan is that you get to come to Japan uh, where you can work part-time uh, to earn money. Uh, to help pay for school. And after you graduate, uh, you have the opportunity to work in the country where you can earn even more money, okay? Uh, if you're studying online, in online courses, uh, you will not have that opportunity. Students who are studying online courses will not get a student visa to come to Japan, okay? Uh, they, they will not get a visa, so they will not have an opportunity to work in Japan uh, during their education and after they graduate, okay? Uh, so uh, I, I think, I personally think one of the biggest benefits uh, of studying in Japan is uh, to be able to uh, work here uh, after you graduate and while you're studying. And so if you're studying online, you miss out completely on that particular benefit. So before you jump in and think about studying online courses, I encourage you to uh, think about the downside <laughs> of these uh, online courses. Um, you know, my, my personal opinion is that if you want to study online, I, I, think, I think there are other choices uh, than the outside of Japan, uh, which I think might be better, okay? Uh, so it's not a particularly good option uh, to study uh, in Japan online at the moment. Okay, thank you so much. No problem. Okay, I see Benedict's hand up once again, if he has any further questions. Yes, um, I have another question. You mentioned the shortage of um, people and workers in Japan. Yes. You, you showed a graph, but you didn't yeah, yeah. mention the reason why, just so that we are informed and we don't get part of the graph <laughs> <laughs> as people uh, who aren't able to work. So, I mean, if you could explain the reason why yeah. um, so, the, yeah. the shortage of workers. Yeah, so it's... 
So one of the biggest reason is the graph that showed you after that, right? Uh, you saw the graph about shortage of workers, then you saw a graph about uh, the shortage of people, the decline of the population, okay? Uh, so the decline of population is caused by aging, right? So more and more people are getting old and old people are dying, right? And uh, at the same time, while people are dying, there are fewer and fewer kids. So people are having fewer and fewer kids to replace all the old people who are dying. That's why the population is declining. So Japan is already at a stage where a lot of people are quite old. So they retired and no longer working. But there is not enough people, not enough young people to replace everybody who has retired. Okay. Uh, so one per so maybe you know two people retire and only one person newly joins the workforce, right? So in that case, you see how there is a shortage of worker. There is just not enough people to replace everybody who's retiring because of old age. So that's why there's a shortage of workers. I don't know if that's clear. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, that's yeah, a short answer. That's, that's very clear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Okay, I see a hand up from Eugene. Uh, please go ahead. Hi. Good Hello there. morning once again. Morning. Uh, I would want to find out how difficult the Japanese language is to learn <laughs> coming from, yeah, because I mean, yeah. coming from an English speaker, mm. certain languages are easier to learn than yeah. others. For instance, French is easier to learn from an English speaker yep. than That's uh, some other languages. So yes. I want to find out. Yeah, so you're absolutely right. French will be a lot easier for you to learn than Japanese. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to lie. Uh, Japanese is not an easy language to learn. Um, so uh, for, for many people who have no background in any Asian language, uh, it tends to be quite tough because the alphabet is completely different uh, and, uh, well, uh, and the grammar can be quite different as well. So what happens is... Um, many foreign students who have no knowledge of the Japanese language before they enroll into a proper university program, they tend to attend something called a Japanese language school. Uh, so, so, the, the, so Japanese language schools are purely for learning Japanese language. Uh, so these are students will spend uh, maybe 40 or 50 hours a week uh, in the classroom uh, to learn the Japanese language from scratch, okay, from the very basics, okay, and uh, it really depends on the individual. But I have seen students who, with no background of the Japanese language, uh, finish um, Japanese language uh, school within half a year, uh, and then go into a proper Japanese language program in a university. Some people may take one and a half, maybe two years, okay. Uh, in that case, you know, uh, that, that's just like a personal, personal difference, okay? So it really depends on the person on how fast they can learn. Uh, but these Japanese language school uh, operate sort of like universities, okay? Um, you are still granted a student visa uh, for studying in a Japanese language school. So that means uh, you have a, a potential access to scholarships. And you can definitely work part-time outside of school, okay? And many people do that. While they're studying Japanese language, they also work in, for example, a Japanese restaurant where they can practice the Japanese language and use it every day on their job so that they can improve much faster than people who, don't, who just learn the classroom and don't use it any other way, okay? So, yeah. So I, th I think, uh, well, I guess that's, that's my short answer. It's, it's, not, it's not an easy language to learn, uh, but there are many people who have succeeded <laughs> by um, you know, enrolling, uh, self-studying, as well as enrolling Japanese language schools, as well as sort of working in Japan and use it on a daily basis. Okay. Uh, Eugene, does that answer the question? Yes, please. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, I think uh, Giselle has a question. Next. Uh. Yeah, hi. Um, oh. I've got two questions. Oh, um, the first is, do you, or do Japanese universities tend to have um, engineering programs that are run in English? Because majority of our students are, you know, engineering students. 
So it'd be good to know whether yeah. this is something that they'd be able to apply to. Yes. And then the second question is, um, how long does it usually take for um, one to apply to a Japanese university from mm -hmm. um, applying to the university itself being accepted and then applying for the visa? Okay, great. Uh, first question uh, about English language engineering programs. Uh, they exist. Okay, they, they do exist. And uh, there are quite a few schools that offer um, English language engineering programs. Uh, but I have to say, quite honestly, there, there are more engineering programs in Japanese than there are in English. <laughs> and uh, if, you, if you know the Japanese language, your options will be wider. Uh, but of course, if you don't know the Japanese language, there are also options. There are also realistic options that you can apply to um, in, a, in a engineering programs. Okay? Uh, so yes, they do exist. And uh, once uh, I have information about these um, programs, I'll gladly share it with you uh, once they become available. So that's uh, question number one. Uh, question number two is how long is the process of application? Uh, this one is really hard to say because of COVID, uh, but so COVID has delayed everything. So right, right now, uh, I, I don't know. It's, it's very hard for me to give a very clear answer because uh, schools are also changing their policies at the moment uh, based on the COVID situation. So for some schools, uh, it has become uh, much, much longer and uh, they, they cannot give a very definite answer at the moment. But to give you uh, my experience from before COVID, when I first applied for the university, okay? Uh, so Japanese universities tend to start in either April or October, okay? So there are two start dates, April or October. Um, uh, my program started in October and I started my application process around May, okay? Um, May of the same year. So, so uh, in May I applied, uh, then um, they received my application and set up interviews uh, June, July. Uh, then after all of that, I was accepted uh, end of July. And then uh, beginning of August, um, they gave me all the uh, paperwork that's needed uh, for uh, visa application. Okay. And then uh, I apply for the visa and visa will usually take about one and a half months. Uh, from submitting the visa application uh, to getting uh, the visa back on your passport. Okay, um, so so but but let, let me just say my my process was very smooth uh, <laughs> because everything uh, there was no wait time. Okay, uh, once I applied, I was immediately contacted for interviews, um, and uh, the interviews were scheduled in very very tight short durations. So I did not have any wait time, okay? And uh, so my, my school was quite fast and I feel like my case is quite unique. Uh, I talked to many admission officers in Japanese universities and they tend to recommend uh, just for safety reasons uh, to recommend starting the application a year before uh, you plan to enroll. So for example, if you want to enroll uh, in university uh, in October of 2022, then you should probably start with the application process in October of 2021, okay? Um, just to be safe, okay? Uh, many schools tend not to be so responsive uh, because they get many, many applicants, okay? Uh, so they, they, it takes time for them to go through all the different applications. And I, just going through all the application can, can take a couple of months. So uh, after that, then they will re reply to everyone uh, in order. So that means that might take another month. So just, just with uh, handling the paperwork, it might take them three or four months. So yeah, some schools are quite late. So well, I recommend if you want to enroll, you start your application process um, a year before the actual enrollment date. Uh, Giselle, does that Thank answer you. the question? Okay, great. Yes, it does. Thanks. Great. Uh, Benedict has his hand up again. Do you have another question, Benedict? Yes. Yeah, I have another question. Um, I have two questions, yes, actually. Please. So the first one is um, for the courses that, as you said, you need to learn, you said you help 
study uh your organization helps teach students japanese before they apply is it like a requirement where you need to study for an amount of time and uh, write an exam or submit uh, as part of your application to prove that uh, you can speak it or i mean you can apply you still be learning alongside being in the school and the second question is um could you speak a little bit about students life in japan sure okay that's good okay starting with the first question uh what is the requirement? What's the Japanese language requirement for up applying to universities in Japan? It really depends. Uh, like Giselle uh, asked earlier on uh, whether there are English language programs and there are English language programs. Uh, not too many, but there are. For these English language programs, there is no uh, language requirement for Japanese. So you don't need to know, know a single word of Japanese to apply for a English language program. Uh, my programs like that as well. My programs are entirely English. Uh, so I have classmates who don't speak Japanese at all. And that's fine because uh, all the classes are conducted in English. All the professors speak English. So that's fine uh, in my case. But as I also mentioned earlier, there are also there are, there are more courses uh, offered in Japanese than English. For these Japanese language programs, there tend to be two different uh, ways that they do it. Uh, one is uh, like Benedict mentioned, uh, you have to study the language a little bit beforehand and set an exam to, pro pro to prove that at least you know some part of the language, okay? To prove that you have a little bit of proficiency before they'll consider your application for the university program. So that's one way of doing it. The other way is um, they, they know that you don't speak the language and they know that you're applying for a Japanese language uh, course. So they will accept your program, uh, sorry, they'll accept your application and they'll accept you into the program. But before they officially enroll you into the program, they will send you to a partner Japanese language school. Okay, the university will have a partnership with the Japanese language school where you're expected to enroll in the Japanese language school and learn the language and then pass some sort of exam to prove your proficiency in the Japanese language. Okay. For some people, as I mentioned, that could be half a year. For some people, it might take longer. It might take two years. Um, so, uh, so it really depends on the individual. Uh, when they pass uh, the language uh, requirement, uh, that exam uh, to prove their proficiency, then they are officially enrolled in the university program as a full-time student of that uh, university's program. Uh, yeah, in, in which case you'll start your regular classes, okay? Yeah, uh, so that's uh, question number one. Question number two is uh, speaking a little bit about student life in Japan. I guess uh, it's a very broad question. So I'll try to take a few um, interesting points that are relevant for you. So one is, uh, well, as a foreign student in Japan, uh, do you meet other students that much? Okay. Um, so this one is actually, the answer is a resounding yes. Uh, as I mentioned, there are, you know, close to a million foreign students uh, in Japan. So it's uh, quite easy to meet other foreign students. Uh, in many cases, uh, many, of, many of you, if you uh, decide to come to Japan for education, you will be living in dormitories. And many of the residents, or I would say majority of the residents in these dormitories are foreign students like yourselves from different countries. Uh, and uh, most of the foreign students, they tend to all speak, uh, sorry, uh, they all speak English pretty well. Okay. Um, yeah. So it's uh, quite easy to meet other foreign students, uh, both on and off campus in Japan. Uh, the other part of, um, well, then the question is, uh, do you get to meet Jap local Japanese people easily? Uh, this really depends. Uh, if you're enrolled in English language program, then uh, I would say less likely uh, because uh, in the English language program, uh, most of the students are foreigners like yourselves, uh, like me, right? Um, Japanese uh, students tend not to take uh, English language programs in universities. They tend to prefer Japanese language ones for obvious reasons. So if you enroll in an English language program, uh, then it might be slightly more difficult to meet Japanese people. 
okay, uh, on campus. Of course, if you're working part-time off the campus, uh, you know, for example, teaching English or working in a restaurant, uh, then you have plenty of chances to meet Japanese people, you know, your coworkers, your customers, uh, your students, um, all of the, them are uh, quite curious about foreigners and uh, culture in other countries. And uh, they would love to uh, speak to you, uh, you know, about, you know, uh, Japan. Um, they'll tell you a lot more about Japan. And meanwhile, they'll try to figure out uh, more about your country uh, as well as you, the person, uh, as an individual. Okay, so, yeah. So a lot of uh, foreign students, they tend to enjoy that aspect of living in Japan a lot uh, when they meet a lot of Japanese people off campus through their jobs or other ways of interacting with uh, local people. Uh, in terms of student life, um, one more thing that's worth noting is what's your say work-life balance, right? Do, do students work really hard? Uh, do they have a lot of free time? Of course, this really depends on the program. Some people, of course, busier than others. So it's very difficult to generalize. Uh, but one thing I find is that, as like I mentioned earlier, uh, student visa here allows you to work 28 hours a week. And I know many students who have the time to work that full 28 hours a week uh, besides doing classes, okay? And doing their homework or doing their research uh, outside the classroom. Okay, uh, students uh, tend to take maybe three or four courses every semester. Um, and each, each course would be about, what, uh, maybe four hours a week in terms of class, uh, the class time, uh, followed by, um, you know, homework and other assignments that you have to do. Uh, so, um, so many people do have that extra 28 hours a week that they can spare to do those part-time jobs or just do other things if they don't, if they don't want to work, right? Uh, there's a lot of entertainment options. Uh, uh, students tend to travel quite a bit uh, in Japan um, when they're here. You know, if you don't like traveling, there's always like movies, you know, uh, other sorts of entertainment, you know, sports. Um, yeah, just... Uh, going out to eat with friends. Uh, there, are many, there are many uh, options for people to enjoy themselves outside of the classroom. <laughs> I, I don't know if that answers the question. Uh, it's a pretty broad question, but uh, yeah, let me know if there's any anything else specifically you want to know. <laughs> oh, I think that answers it. Thank okay. you. Okay, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Any other questions for anyone? Okay, uh, seems like there's no other questions. Well, if there's no other questions then, um, okay, so I think uh, maybe I will end uh, the conversation and the presentation for today. So for next step, what I will do is uh, I'm in contact with Giselle. So I will send her some links uh, so that you can do a short sign up with us uh, we're not asking for money or anything. Like I said, uh, the sign up is just for you to, you know, follow up uh, to, so for us to have first have your email and uh, maybe your Facebook, for instance, uh, so that we can update you when we have new information about universities. Okay. Uh, in terms of applying to universities, uh, most of them will be done directly from you to the universities. We'll provide you the information, but you have to apply yourself. Um, in, in Japan, it's, uh, mostly, it's mostly illegal for third parties like us to apply on your behalf, okay? Uh, the students need to apply themselves. Uh, <laughs> only that way the university know that it's a real application that's coming from the student. So yeah, we'll help you, we'll help you by providing the information that's needed uh, to apply. Uh, but the application itself uh, will have to be done by you, okay? Uh, so yes, um, the next step, I will provide Giselle uh, with these links so that you can sign up with us. And then uh, after you sign up, uh, we can provide you information, further information uh, about different universities uh, when they're ready to accept foreign students, okay? Great.
that's uh, it. If there is nothing else, then uh, yeah. Well, thank you very much all for your time today. Uh, it was uh, great uh, hearing uh, all of the different questions you had about studying abroad in Japan and Japan in general. And uh, yeah, if uh, you have any questions, uh, please feel free to contact me again. Uh, I will provide you that with my contacts later on as well. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm uh, going to sign off now. Thank you. Thank you too. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Thank you.